Hi, this is Jack Lifton, and today I'm speaking with Constantine Karianopoulos, the chairman and CEO of Neo Performance Materials, a company which he brought back uh, from the living dead, uh, I think four years ago now, is it not? Um, well, I've, I've had a number of uh, stints. Um, uh, you know, the latest one started last July. It wasn't yeah. quite, but, you know, it was, we were really feeling the, uh, the impact of COVID and the market yeah. and so on. But, yeah, we, we bounced back very handsomely. Yeah, and, and I think everyone knows how well you did in the last quarter. That, that's that's uh, an old story. It's at least three days old, isn't it? So that's ancient history. Yeah. What I'd like to ask you today is, one, do you have any competition in the non-Chinese world? Well, yeah, we, we have three divisions. Uh, mm -hmm. So division, we do have some competition. In our MagnaQuench division, clearly don't. Uh, however, in that business, our magnetic materials and magnets compete with other technologies. So mm -hmm. this you can never live in a world without competition. In in our chemicals and oxides business, which is where we produce rare earths uh, and uh, catalytic materials and electronic materials, a lot of value-added specialty stuff. Um, yeah, outside of, um, we, we have two plants in China and one plant in uh, Estonia. Uh, so technically, um, we don't have a lot of competitors. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, you know, Linus and, and MP materials, but they are in parts of the supply chain that are right. a lot than we are. In, in the value-added space, we tend to compete in the catalytic materials, for example, uh, and even in the, some, you know, the nanostructured electronic materials we sell to Japan, we tend to compete with chemical companies, mm -hmm. either Europe or, or Japan. So, and, and in our... Um, Rare metals business, tantalum, niobium. We compete against uh, uh, again other alternatives, or, or there's a few uh, producers of uh, specialty super alloy uh, metals that we compete against. Still, still in all, I don't know of any other company uh, operating in the West today that has the range of uh, product specialization you do with regard to rare earths. So I, I think that. Neo Performance is, is really the go-to company for rare earth products uh, out if you don't want uh, to work with a Chinese company. Um, so my next question is, what is the future for you? Are, are, tell me what you're planning to do in, I understand that you've got good market in Japan and uh, in Europe. Are you planning to expand in Europe or the United States? Um, Jack, you and I have talked about this subject before. Um, yes. We go where the demand, where our customers need us mm -hmm. to be. Right. Uh, so we are in Europe because we have some very big customers in Europe. And given how fast the European market is growing, driven primarily by green energy, green technology, decarbonization, electric vehicles, a big mm -hmm. factor, uh, it's quite likely that we will have to make a decision in the next few quarters to expand significantly in Europe. Um, the In China, a lot of our Western customers have plants in China. So, you know, we'll continue its business as usual there as the economy is really uh, steaming ahead. Japan is a is a great market because that's where a lot of the innovation comes, uh, and we will continue to serve our Japanese customers in a highly collaborative way. The United States is is more of a question mark. Um, we don't see demand growing as fast. You know, things things haven't developed and unfolded um, outside of defense in the United States. You know, EVs and so on. Yep, yeah, that, that that demand is growing, but not at the rate that is growing in Europe and, um, uh, and China uh, and Japan. So, you know, given the fact that we have a finite capital to invest, we'll be investing in the markets that are growing faster. And eventually when demand develops in the United States and we feel that our customers are pulling us uh, a bit more aggressively than we're doing now, um, we will eventually, I'm sure, invest in uh, production in the United States as well. 
The Financial Times this morning had a very lengthy article about Foxconn going into the electric car assembly business. And I, I'm just wondering, and, and I'll understand if you don't want to comment, have you spoken with Foxconn about any part of their supply chain? Um, well, that, that's an easy uh, answer. No, we, we don't deal directly with Foxconn, but we right. do deal with a lot of the supply. supply. Of Foxconn. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we're, we're part of uh, supply chains that Foxconn has a very dominant position in. My question is, if, if Foxconn suddenly you know, begins producing electric cars and, and the Europeans really focus on, uh, let's say, self-sufficiency and domestic, um, where do you see the, the best growth for, for your company in the next five or 10 years? Geographically, I yes. would Europe clearly and China and Asia to a lesser degree. But clearly, Europe is is in the driving, in the driver's seat uh, right now in terms of EV supply chains. Um, and and by EV supply chains, I'm not only talking about magnets for the traction motors. There's mm-hmm. a whole host of applications uh, that will grow along with it. Uh, smaller motors, sensors, um, other smart devices, chips, and so on. So it's a uh, you know the 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 driver uh, for global demand and, and and industrial output is very very significant um, in, in terms of uh, EVs and if Foxconn goes into it, I'm sure uh, we will have uh, opportunities in wherever Foxconn does business, whether it's Asia, if they ever build a plant in in the United States, North America. Europe, wherever, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure their suppliers and therefore people like companies like ourselves will will have to make plans to but, respond. But, but the fact is, of course, your company does not have infinite capital to deploy. So what mm-hmm. I'm saying is it looks to me, and you know, you just like your comment, looks to me like the United States is becoming an also ran in this. There's a lot of talk in the United States, but I don't see much action. You're you're in you're involved in this. Do you see more action than I do? Um, not necessarily. I, I do see a lot of talk, and eventually, you know, I'm 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 always an eternal optimist, and I also I always believe in the human condition. So I, I at some point, talk and planning will translate into into action. It's just taking a little longer. And 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 don't forget that uh, in North America, both in in Canada, in my country, and and yours in the United States. We do have this election cycle that uh, the powers that be need to manage to. So decisions don't always uh, are not always made on the basis of the best reasons and and rationality. So you know we have to to live within that uh, that environment. And Europe, you have the European Union that tends to make decisions outside of um, uh, election cycles in mm-hmm. China. That is that has been the case, and it will continue to be the case. So yeah, different environments. Um, you know, we will continue to allocate our capital to areas and uh, areas of investment, both geographically uh, and in terms of the activity that we uh, we expect to get the highest return. And then one last question: Do you expect Canadian mines to be operational in this decade to supply uh, rare earth uh, materials? This decade is a long time. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I've been wrong before, Jack. So I, not <laughs> invasive, but it's it's really tough. I, I you know, to find deposits in Canada uh, that are really world class because it's a highly globalized industry, mm-hmm. and these deposits and the junior mining companies that are developing need to be competitive globally. Right, I see the possibility, but. You know, I, I, I don't give them much more than a 50-50 chance, although there are a few projects that are very worthwhile to at least take to the next step. Okay. Christine, I'd love to put you on the spot some more, but I'll hold that for a future <laughs> talk. So thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. Always a pleasure.